Hi, hello there. Today I will talk about the second part of the one week journey to Iceland, focusing on days four to seven. On the fourth day, we will head north along the east coast towards Djupivogur, where we will take a scary shortcut to Egilstadir, where we will get back on route one and turn west towards Lake Mivatn to an amazing area known as the Diamond Circle, where we will spend two days. Djupivogur is a cozy town, perfect for stretching your legs before heading up to the most strenuous section of the road, with two main tourist attractions. Egin Igledvik artwork, 34 granite eggs representing local bird species, and JFA's handcraft, a handmade art store and stone garden. Nearing Lake Mivatn area, the landscape becomes increasingly moon-like and announces one of the most spectacular regions in Iceland. Krafla is a volcanic caldera 10 miles northeastern from Lake Mivatn. Its main attraction is a crater Viti, the Icelandic word for hell, filled with blue water and surrounded by a geothermal area. Few miles further west, we fall into Hverir, the moonlike area with steam and smoke fuming of hot springs, bubbling mud springs, fumaroles, and hissing cairn chimneys. Reykjavik, a cozy town on the shore of Lake Mivatn, offers several accommodation possibilities, including Cape Mivatn, one of the best camping sites in Iceland. Dimu Borgir, located east of Lake Mivatn, meaning dark castles, is a unique lava field consisting of unusually shaped rock formations and caves, a perfect home for elves. After a long day, it is time for regeneration. Nivatn Nature Baths is a smaller brother of the famous Blue Lagoon. Alkaline and mineral rich warm water without added chlorine is a perfect body and soul healer in the never ending evening. On the fifth day, we will continue to explore the Diamond Circle, starting with a morning walk along the Lake Mivatn shore, climbing to Hverfjall Volcano, followed by whale watching tour and visiting the famous Asbjörgi Canyon and Detifoss waterfall. The shores of Lake Mivatn offer numerous opportunities for walking and bird watching, especially on its western coast. Hverfjall is a volcano crater near the eastern shore of Lake Mivatn with a diameter of one kilometer, 0.6 miles, and fully covered with black ash. Walking up to and around the crater's rim offers magnificent views into the crater and the whole Nivatan area. Husavik, a small town on the north coast, is the whale watching capital of Iceland and one of the most popular in the world. Besides whale watching tours, Husavik also offers several other activities for tourists. Husavik Whale Museum being the must one to mention. 40 miles northeast of Husavik, we enter the Asbirgi, a horseshoe-shaped canyon at the northernmost part of Vatnajökull National Park. And the gravel roads leads us along the gorge and Jökulsa Afjörlum River to Detifoss, the most powerful waterfall in Europe. Again, as often the case in Iceland, we can walk very close to the top of the waterfall. On day six, we are heading on an almost 300 miles journey towards Reykjavik. Despite spending more time on the road, the journey is not less spectacular. Along the way, we will visit Godafoss waterfall, Akureyri, a cozy capital of Northern Iceland, and the famous Glaumber Museum. The last waterfall we will see on our journey is Godafoss, which means in Icelandic, a waterfall of the gods, 30 miles west of Lake Mivatn. It was named after the legend that says that upon Christianity became the official religion of Iceland, the law speaker Forgir Ljósvetnin Gagudi threw his statues of the Norse gods into the waterfall. Apart from Reykjavik, Akureyri is the only town in Iceland that makes a city-like impression. A cozy, clean and lively city is located at the inner end of the fjord Eyjafjordur. The list of attractions contains several churches, museums, lovely shops and restaurants. And don't forget to taste the famous Brynja ice cream. 60 miles further west, we reach Glaumber Farm Museum with its spectacular old turf farmhouse and 19th century timber houses 
with exhibitions of rural life through the centuries. But its most significant attraction is the grave of Snorri Torfinson, the first European born in America. A few minutes drive to the south lies the Vidimirar Kirkia, a beautiful turf church from the 19th century. Among several attractions is a preserved old sitting area with men sitting at one side and women at the other one. The last day of the one week journey is dedicated to Reykjavik, Iceland's capital. It is a lively, well-organized and tourist-friendly city with over 130,000 inhabitants. Besides must-sees such as Hallgrimskirkja and the National Museum of Iceland, I would recommend visiting Maritime Museum, Arbjörsafn and making a shopping tour along Laugavegur, one of the oldest shopping streets in Iceland, hosting exclusive stores, bars and restaurants. Hallgrimskirkja Lutheran Parish Church is the largest church in Iceland. It is located at the top of a short slope in the city center and offers excellent views of the capital and its surroundings. National Museum of Iceland offers permanent exhibitions as well as numerous temporary special exhibitions. The most attractive permanent collection making of a nation heritage and history in Iceland provides insight into the history of Iceland from the settlement to the present day and it's a must see. If you like the story, thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned. Bye.